Welcome back to Camp Geeks, ladies and gentlemen. I am back with another product review. Well, this is not actually a product review. This is one of my first install tutorials here on the channel because this is a, an item that comes with some assembly required. Um, so this is the Topeak Journey Bicycle Trailer. It's a single wheel design, very similar to the Bob trailers out there. Uh, aluminum frame, and uh, I'm going to have all the detailed information in my product review, which will come later after I actually have some hands-on use of it, because I don't do reviews unless I actually use the product. Uh, but this video is going to be about unboxing, uh, setting it up, and then installing it on the bicycle. No real review in here, more about the actual product and how to actually get it running. So, with that, so I don't have any tools to put it, set aside or anything, we're getting this out, I, I unsealed the box, and I haven't looked at it, but... Let's get everything out of the box, shall we? And then we'll get everything on the table. All right, so we got the wheel. Uh, looks like the instructions and the uh, actual through axle for your, or the quick release uh, adapter for your bikes in there as well. Set that down there for a moment. And then we actually have the trailer. That is it. Let's sort of get the box out of the way. Start with wrapping everything. So it looks like the uh, dry bag as well as the flag is in here. The flag looks like it's in two pieces. The actual flag pole and then the actual flag. Uh, looks like we have some zip ties here that are actually holding this so it doesn't flop around and bang around and actually scratch your trailer all up. In order to get this properly set, you do have to actually take off this. You can see this uh, the triangle, the rear triangle actually attached to the bike. Looks like you have to remove that. Flip it on the outside, which we'll do here shortly. That all that takes is an Allen wrench. It looks like uh, possibly a, uh, a box wrench as well. But well, there's the actual flag, just a yellow flag, no to a peak symbol or anything, just a plain yellow flag, a little bit different than what like Burley does with theirs. They like to advertise. And then we actually have the dry bag, which we pull that out of the bag real quick. So this one obviously is branded to peak. The Journey Trailer Dry Bag. And it looks like, I mean, it has a really nice big opening so you can get anything, that, even large stuff in here really easily before you actually do the whole uh, twist over and, uh, and seal. So it is, it is a dry bag, so it, it is waterproof. Uh, I should say water resistant, right? Because it's not going to be submerged. Uh, although you could submerge it, I guess. This was probably just like standard dry bag where you can submerge it. So yeah, waterproof. Uh, and then uh, there's some, some zip ties holding the actual flag pole. Zip ties holding that. Uh, zip ties holding with uh, at least a piece to hold the frame apart so you, it doesn't get squeezed or anything in transport for the wheel. So, well, I'm going to get together, and I'll, I'll give you a little list of this, but I'm going to get some uh, uh, actual some cable cutters to get the zip ties off, and then the proper wrenches. I'll find out the size of those, and I'll be back here in just a second. Okay, so I'm back. I have the tools. And just uh, a real quick and easy way to find out what tools you, you need. In with the wheel is this little bike that has the uh, instruction manual and the, the actual uh, skewer that goes on your bike and uh, some bolts actually for the fender. And in here, uh, they actually tell exactly what tools you need. So essentially what you need is a 4mm and 5mm Allen wrench and a 10mm uh, box or a box wrench basically. Those are the three tools you need to do everything on this, other than, well, that's the case, a wire cutters to, to get rid of all the zip ties. Now, I also have my trusty Park Tool 3-way that has a 4, 5, and a 6 millimeter on it, which I like using, but it doesn't get in all locations, and it doesn't give me as much torque as a standard wrench. But either way, I am going to actually stand, cut off these zip ties, and I don't feel the need, I guess, to bring the camera in for this, because it's literally just cutting off the zip ties there's the pole to mount the flag, which I'm going to set back here, out of the way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take these two big zip ties off. And just cut them off because you don't, you're not going to need them. So they're just there for shipping purposes. Now, that guy, you can see if I left it on, or if they didn't zip tie it, it would just bang around. I mean, or pack, you have to put a lot more packing material in there. Uh, one small zip tie back here it looks like, and then some tape, which there's tape kind of around this, which I might want to get a small knife for. Just use my trusty wire cutters, there we go. 
just snip a little bit of the tape and then you can just rip the tape. There we go. So there's the full off there. And then they just have a standard, just like any bicycle, if you ever assemble the bike to, to hold the, the prongs apart from where the wheel goes so it doesn't bend in shipping. So there we are. Now we're down to uh, just a assembly. Or in this case, in the front, we're going to do disassembly first. So if we get these items out of the way. <clears throat> you don't have, I guess, a, a starting point per se, um, but we are, maybe we'll, yeah, I think we'll do the front first. Uh, in the instruction manual, let's see what they do. They In there, they probably tell you to do the first step is, uh, well, the first one they show you is actually how to put on the fender and the rear wheel, and then they show you how to actually flip this inside out. Really isn't a big deal which way you go, uh, because we actually have a good setup for this for, uh, to show you this, five millimeter. So there's the Allen bolt there for the five millimeter. The, the, the 10 millimeter box right is actually for the bottom of this, because this is one piece. So all you're gonna do is loosen this to the point where the, the nut comes off the bottom. And then it's just a, a the, the bolt itself is basically an axle. So there we go. So there's the guy there, and there is a washer down there. Let's see if there's any other washers. No, there is not. Okay, so we take that off, then we just flip it around. Make sure you keep it up to the right same way they had it. And if you have any doubts about which way it goes, you can actually pull this guy back. There we go. You can see how the, the bolt actually will come here from the bottom. I'll get a little bit closer to that here in a moment. So we got the bolt back through. I'll put the washer on. And then the nut, just hand tighten it, and then go back and start tightening this down. Now you'll want to get this kind of back to the point where they had it, where it's not aggressively tight. It is a nylon lock washer or lock nut. That's the one thing I didn't notice, but you are going to want it so it's uh, it's not going to come loose on you. But I'm sure that if you actually were to crank this thing down. Uh, it would probably interfere with the uh, the actual turning of the, the arm there. So. All right, so, I think that's good enough for me. I don't really have any play in it, so that's what you really want. Right? That's the, the true justification of it. Now, the back of the trailer is going to be, in this case, the wheel bag. So this is the other bag that they sent. And like I said, I did kind of pop in there and grab the, the uh, instructions out of here. But they have the fender and then the actual wheel itself. Now, this is a 40 PSI tire. I always like to make sure that they uh, they don't have a direction on it, but I'll probably just keep it the same way. The, the quick race here on, on bike setups is always on the left side. So we're just gonna keep it that way on this guy as well. We'll put it on the left side. And uh, it does come with some air. The tire is not full by any means. But the first thing we're gonna wanna do before we put the wheel and the tire on, is to get the fender set up. So, in this case, I might actually, here, let's see, pull that off there. Just a uh, polycarbonate uh, plastic fender. Obviously, uh, some pieces here. I think I'm gonna actually change the orientation of the video so you can actually get a better view of how I'm doing that, all right? All right, so if you can see here, there actually are two bolt holes here and one here, and that's what the three that the actual fender itself is gonna come with. So the fender comes with this little uh, metal guy here, which is actually, that's gonna go here. And this is actually the back, and this is where you can actually do a, a, metal, a light mount or a reflector mount. And then the, you can see there's one hole in the, in the fender here that's actually gonna be up here. So this is the first one we're gonna actually put in. We're gonna put all these screws in loosely in the bag with the actual bike connector, or the axle. For, the, for the bike itself is a small bag with three screws. These should be all the exact same. Uh, I believe they're four millimeter. So that's what you need the four millimeter for. And again, I'm gonna kinda go with my three way, I think. So yep, four millimeter. And I'm gonna start with just this front one up here. And just kinda thread it in loosely. I'm not gonna tighten it up yet until I get all three set. And then we're gonna come back here to this guy. We're just gonna go from the outside in. 
through the hole of the, the actual frame. And there we are. So we got all three of them set in there. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this. Uh, see, that's in the three-way kind of socks on it. But that one right there, it's best to use a smaller arrow wrench. They don't work with every scenario, you know what I mean? All right, don't want to go too tight. It's just going through plastic. Now well, I can use my handy three ways, right? All right, so we'll just go ahead and tighten these guys up. And just firm, you know, you're not trying to do too much crazy about tension. You don't want to uh, uh, strip the threading out or anything on the frame. It is aluminum, you know, so the it is light, so. All right, so we got that side on, good there. Now we're gonna put the wheel on, which is pretty obvious, right? So all we have to do here is uh, make sure that the, the quick release skewer is loose enough. Go ahead and just lift it up. I'm gonna hold it by the frame rather than the fender. Now you may have to do some spreading or pinching of the frame itself. In this case, just a little bit, not too much. There we go. And Get the quick release where we want it. Now I always like putting the quick release back away. That way if something was to come up it's not going to get hooked in this little crevice here. That way, uh, I mean if you were backing up it would do that, but then we got the wheel all in there. Obviously it's a freshly packed, it's not a sealed bearing unit on the hub, uh, but it is freshly packed so it's not going to be too loose yet, but uh, it should be fairly straight from the factory. You just need to get some air in there. And that's it. That is the uh, installation of that guy. So that's the buildup of the actual trailer itself. Uh, the last piece of the build, which we'll do here shortly, is the installation of the actual trailer connector. This is going to replace your quick release skewer on your bike. Now they do have washers set. Uh, without the washers, except for a standard 135 setup, if you have a 130, 130 mm setup, you do need these washers. Um, that way you, you get the, the correct uh, distance between where your actual skewers would go. Um, and it's just a standard four millimeter um, solid uh, through bolt there. So it does replace your quick release. You're not gonna have a quick release rear reel, which in bike touring situations, remember that is actually nice. That way you're not worried about people just ganking your wheel real quick. So that's one thing there. Um, and then it will just connect quick release lag and we'll do that uh, outside as well. But before we go out there, I do wanna actually grab the actual bag and take a peek at it. Uh, it does look like there are frame mounts on it. So you can see these little Velcro guys that'll actually wrap around the frame itself. Uh, so that way it'll actually stay in place better. I may not be putting it in the correct direction. I, I haven't really looked at that yet. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably backwards actually. But it is a fairly sizable bag. I gotta give them credit on that. So. That's pretty awesome. But we'll get it. Uh, we'll get it full of uh, some bulky stuff, um, and then we'll actually be able to put it in there and actually show you how it how it goes in. I think I'm back. I, I, I may be backwards on that one. Torpedo dry bag. Yeah, it doesn't unfold enough over there. Oh. Well, we'll get it full and then we can actually see how it goes and then we'll, we'll show you how that goes as well. So the first time I actually had it in, I had it in correctly actually, I just had to unfold it some more. And uh, if you actually see there's, these are the Velcro things I was working on. There's a longer one and a shorter one. The shorter one actually is the, the larger size, so it goes up front. And you just un-Velcro and then wrap it around. So the same thing with the back one. Put it up and the velcro to the outside, wrap it around, and now the bag should be in location where we have basically full access right in. So I'll bring you in here and have you take a peek at how big this sucker is real quick. So it is impressive. It is very large. So you can see that? That's how the, the bag goes together there. And just so you see again here, this is how it's going to attach to the bike. See so I pull it back. Uh, can't, hard to do with one hand, but you pull it back and then the big the piece drops in there. 
And uh, I'll show you that actually on the bike here shortly. So I just put some ballast and blankets and a comforter in here. And now we're gonna go ahead and close it. So I'll show you how to close that. There is first a zipper up here. And that's gonna basically get your, your top in a nice straight line. So it's not wobbling around on you. So I, I do like that they give you that. Makes it a little bit easier. Uh, and usually you just roll, right, with the, with the dry bag. So we're gonna start by just rolling. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to get at least a couple rolls in it to make sure that it seals good so there's no way water can get in there. Uh, and then this little strap guy here, uh, there is actually on both the front and the back, there is a female buckle that you can buckle it down there. Uh, same thing with the, the front up here. Go ahead and actually push this. on the inside here and of course this is not really fully done yet so but you buckle that and I kind of wish that was maybe a little better location of course I could go on the outside but I'd want to keep it away from the front fork here so and then you actually have your main buckle which is going to maintain it closed uh, and then well actually you probably want to do that buckle over the handles so put the handles down and then the big buckle and Voila! Uh, now this little guy back here, you're going to want to keep it from getting in the spokes. So that would be one thing I would make sure to tuck in as well. But now we're all set. So basically we have some, at least not a whole lot of weight in here, but something that's given form to the bag so you can like at least see what it looks like. Um, obviously depending on what you're packing in it, it's going to depend on what it's going to look like. Uh, but you should want to, you know, that, that, that bag, you should want to get that down. You'll probably maybe find it a little bit easier way to get everything packed in there. Uh, but obviously with this, you're going to want to make sure that it's evenly weighted. But let's go ahead and show you how to attach the bike. I did want to mention real quick with the flag before we head up uh, to attach the bike. Uh, this is the pole that it comes with. And it does come with the flag that just kind of goes over the pole. Now the pole, when it goes on there, it actually is not going to really go anywhere. It's kind of a tight fit. So once you get it on there, the flag isn't just going to want to flop back off. Now on the bike itself, there actually are two locations you can place it, on the right or on the left. Uh, and then you actually have your flag. So safety wise, it's definitely best to, to use the pole or use the flag. It uh, definitely doesn't want to come up very easily either. So it, it sticks pretty good. Oh yeah, you can feel it stick in there. So they do include the flag, highly recommend using it. I'm not going to actually take it up for the install of the bike because I just don't want it in the way, but it does come with it. So. The rest of these photos are going to be without it. Okay, so we're here on my driveway with my bike here. And uh, what we're going to start with is obviously removing the rear skewer because the mount kit for the trailer replaces the actual rear skewer. Now I'm going to get the mount kit ready as well, which we just have to unscrew the one side, which quickly is easy with that little adapter there. Uh, and in my case, I shouldn't need the washers. Now if you have a 130mm setup, you will need the washers. Uh, I just don't my setup, so we're going to go ahead and re release the skewer and just unscrew it like you normally would. If you've never uh, done a uh, rear skewer before, you just have to unthread that right side. Uh, I just usually use the, the handle here as a quick and easy way to get it off. And there we are. And uh, I would store all these pieces together because if you're not going to use the trailer, I would probably put your bike skewer back on, the quick release skewer back on. All right, so we have the setup here. Now you will see that there are some things here uh, that we we'll want to make note of. This right here is going to be actually the left side, and this is going to be the right side. So it's actually opposite. The threaded side is on the left, not the right. Um, essentially how we know that is knowing how this is actually going to go. So if we actually look at this, if we actually put it in this way, just a, a test mechanism here. Uh, this is not going to work, right? This little piece down here is keeping it from rocking toward the back. Whereas if we go the other way, and uh, since the camera's set up that side, I'll just stick it through. And then uh, put this over, watch and say, I, I guess on this side, I, I'll show you on this side. Let me bring the camera over. So you can see where we, where that little leg is, is going to rest against the bottom here. So it goes back, it goes through. Ooh, there we go, and then it hits it catches on the bottom lip is nice and flush mounted isn't going to actually interfere with anything uh, and 
is aimed toward the back of the bike. So that's exactly how we want it. Uh, so what we're going to do is, I'll bring the camera back around, but we're going to go ahead and just thread with, you can actually use a 4 millimeter wrench if you wanted to, thread the other side on. So let me get the camera back over there. Alright, so I got the camera view in here a little closer and we're going to kind of bring it in slowly. You just want to make sure that as you bring it in, that everything lines up properly. You know, in my setup, I actually could use the washers. Maybe I will. So I'm wrong. I'm going to go ahead and use the washers because I got plenty of room and I wouldn't mind getting it away a little bit further away from everything. So I'm going to go ahead and use the washers. Why not? Slowly bring it back in. Uh, this is the thing is obviously this side is going to rock a lot until you actually get it brought in. So just make sure you keep it lined up. All right, there we go. Now we can make sure that everything's in the dropouts good. Tighten up. There we go. So now we have these metal arms on both sides pushing against the bike frame. So if we, basically if you think about it as a mechanism, if I push down here, it can't go down because this metal arm is actually pushing on the frame itself. Uh, and the same with that on this side. So it works really good in that case. Uh, and obviously we have our quick release skewer still. Um, and we'll want to hold on to that. And now we're ready to actually attach the trailer. All right, so we bring the trailer in here. And like before, we have these quick release mechanisms. Now, if you actually pull back on this and twist it a little bit, it's actually gonna hold open. So, make sure you get in here so you can actually see a little more. So, I pull back and then twist a little bit and it holds it open. So, we can get, the, get it on the mounts. So, that's how we're gonna do it first. Okay, it's on the mounts and then you just kind of hold this and twist. And it pops, the yellow will go all the way flush at the edge. And the other side, now it actually literally cannot come off the bike. And uh, you'll see if I actually come up over here. Now it's actually fully attached to the bike itself. Um, and isn't going to go anywhere. And that's the point, right? So, same thing if we actually want to remove it. We're just going to go in the opposite direction when we get the bike so it's not tipping. Uh, we can actually open it up on both sides. We can actually do this one handed. I'll do this one handed right now. Ah, come all the way back there, you turn. Ah, and then tilting, just lift and then set down. Now the nice thing about the Topeak trailer is I can show you here in the video, there are some rubber feet on it. Uh, get my bike so it doesn't go anywhere, geez. There are some rubber feet down here so that when you place it down, it actually it does set nice and level on the ground uh, and doesn't go anywhere. So gotta give them uh, props on that one. So that is set up and mounting of the Topeak Journey trailer. Uh, I don't really have any miles on it yet. I literally, this is the first time I've actually put it on. So, you see what I see. Uh, so far I'm happy with it, um, how everything actually is attached, how everything goes together. Um, and uh, the quick release mechanism I actually liked better than I thought I actually would when I actually first saw it. Uh, so it's good there. I love the weight of it because it's all aluminum. But that said, that's gonna come all in a, in a review. Once I actually have some miles on the trailer, I'll actually do a full write-up and review on it on both the website and, and uh, through the YouTube channel. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions, let me know. You can actually get a contact me directly through the website, campgeeks.com. And uh, let me know if you have any questions about the trailer or if you have if you have the trailer yourself, right in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel, share, uh, make sure everybody that you know watches this so we can actually get more viewers. I'm going to have a lot more bike-related accessories coming soon. Because uh, I have several that I've already received and more that is actually in the way. So I uh, hope to actually have a lot more for you guys in the, in the coming weeks. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you soon.